this is. Um, take the exponent, set it equal to zero, and solve. Well, x equals zero. Now, when it's an exponential function, that's not your asymptote. That is your middle value on your table of values. All right, right here. So I'm going to go up one, two, and down negative one, negative two. I also taught you whatever number is being added or subtracted, whatever your constant term is, that's going to be your horizontal asymptote. Okay, so we do have a horizontal asymptote at positive five. One, two, three, four, five, and there we go. Exponential functions always have logarithm or uh, horizontal asymptotes. Okay, so guys, here we go. Let's go. Put a two in for x right here. Put a two in for x. So we have two squared plus five. Two times two is four plus five is nine. Now let's put a one in for x. Put a one right here. Two to the one power is two plus five is seven. Now we'll put a zero in for x. Two to the zero power is one. Anything to the zero power is one. So two to the zero power is one, and one plus five is six. Now we'll put a negative one in for x. Now if, if you can't do these in your head, then use a calculator. Two to the negative one is point five, and point five plus five is five point five. Now put a negative two in for x. A negative two. Two to the negative two is, type into your calculator if you need to, it's point two five plus five. So point two five plus five is five point two five. So here we go. Over two, up nine. Over one, up seven. Over zero, up six. Negative one is five point five. Negative two is five point two five. So the graph has the normal exponential curve to it, like it's supposed to. And it's getting closer and closer to the asymptote, but never touching it or crossing it. Okay. All right, next one is logarithmic. And so here we go, same thing that I taught you before. Now, by the way, the argument is x. The argument is not x plus 4. If the argument were x plus 4, there'd be parentheses around this whole thing, all right? The argument is just x. So we take x and then we set it equal to 0 and we solve. Well, nothing we can do is 0. So your vertical asymptote is going to be at 0. The first thing you do with, with logarithmic functions when you're graphing them is you must find the vertical asymptote first, okay? Now next, we're going to decide whether we're supposed to graph um, on this left side or this right side. So let's find out, shall we? Here we go. We try negative 1 and we try negative or positive 1. Well, right away, if we put a negative 1 in for x, we're taking the logarithm of negative 1. That's not possible. You cannot take the logarithm of negative 1. So is going to be on the right side. So we're going to want to get real close to that asymptote. Okay, so that's going to be at point 1. And then, of course, working our way to the right, we'll have 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay. So here we go, guys. Actually, if you'll listen to me carefully with your LN button, you can type this entire thing into your calculator. Hit 3, then your LN button, and then for X, put in point 1. Then close the parentheses and then point four. Let me type that in. Three natural logarithm of point one. Close my parentheses plus four, and I'm getting out negative two point nine one. All right, now let's put one in for uh, x right here. So we'll put a one right here. All right. So with my calculator, go over and put a one in, and I will get out four. So my answer for y is four. Now let's put 2 in for x. So now we're going to put a 2 right here. All right. So 3 times the natural logarithm of 2. Close the parentheses plus 4 and you will get 6.08. Okay, now we're going to substitute 3 in for x. So we'll put a 3 right here. 3 natural logarithm of 3. Close your parentheses plus 4. And that's going to give you 7.296. 7.296. Lastly, we're going to put 4 in for x. So here we go. 3 times the natural logarithm of 4, close your parentheses, plus 4, will give you 8.16. 8.16. And here we go. Point 1 is negative 2.9. We'll get down here. 1 is at 4. That's kind of a big stretch, isn't it? 2 is at 6.0. 3 is at 7.2. And 4 is at 8.1. So it's kind of one of those stretched out curves. That's fine, though. And it looks something like this. 
asymptote down here. So those are the ways that you graph logarithmic functions. Now we just did an exponential right back here. Let's do one more, okay? Now here, um, first of all, you want to take your exponent and set it equal to zero and solve. Well, we did that at zero. That's going to be the middle value on your table of values, okay? Now, because I have a zero here, we'll go up one, two, and we'll go down negative one, negative two. Also, on these types of graphs, we have a horizontal asymptote. Wherever your constant term is, that's going to be your horizontal asymptote. So here we have a negative three for a constant term, so my horizontal asymptote will be at negative three. It's the number that's being added or subtracted times the exponential. And by the way, if there's no number here, if the problem is just f of x equals 2 to the ex power, then the asymptote would be at 0. You could put a plus 0 right there, or a minus 0. Okay? There will always be a horizontal asymptote when you're graphing um, exponential functions. Now, here we go. Let's put a 2 in for um, x right here. So I'm telling you, with your calculator, you can type in 2, hit the E button, and this will pop up, and then type in 2 for your x. Close the parentheses, then minus 3. You can type that whole thing in and get out your answer. That's what I'm going to do. So 2 times e to the second power uh, minus 3 would give me 11.78. Now let's put 1 in for x. So we'll put a 1 right here. All right, and here we go. Um, you will get out 2.44. Now let's put a 0 in right here, a zero, and we should get out a negative one, negative one. Moving on, let's put a negative one in for x. Now we're going to put a negative one here. And we're going to get out negative 2.26, negative 2.26, and then we'll put a negative two in for x. So a negative 2 right here, and we will get out um, negative 2.73. And let's plot those points, and we're looking pretty good, okay? Here we go. <coughs> Positive 2 up to 8, 9, 10, 11, about right here. Um, 1 is over uh, 2.4. 0 is at negative 1. Negative 1 is at negative 2.2. Negative 2 is at um, negative 2.7. And so there we go. There's the curve. And getting closer and closer to the horizontal asymptote. There we go. Okay, guys. Go back and watch this again if you need to. Okay, that's how you would solve it. Graph those. Okay, moving on now to some word problems. You deposit 1500 in an account to base. 6.5% annual inter interest. Notice this key phrase here. Compound it continuously. Find the balance after 10 years. Okay, no problem. Compound it continuously means this formula right here. <coughs> there it is. Okay. Now, this is my ending amount, my balance. This is my starting amount, my principal. And this is my rate. And this is my time in years. We deposit 1500 That's my principal. That's what you're starting off with. It pays 6.5% interest, so e to the 0.065, remember, to move the decimal two places. Find the balance after 10 years, so for t, I'm going to put a 10, all right? So with my calculator, first of all, I'm going to multiply these two together, and I will get e to the 0.65 power, all right? So now with your calculator, just simply type in 1,500. And then your E button, and then 0.65, and hit enter, and you will get $2,873.31, which is the right answer right here. So you found the balance. So how much did you start off with? $1,500. How much did you end up with? Uh, $2,873. Okay. I knew to use this formula here because it said compounded continuously. I knew that I was solving for A because it said find the balance, and the the balance is my ending amount. All right, let's try the next one, number 76. 
you deposit um, $300 in an account that pays 7% annual interest compound and continuously find the balance after 20 years. All right. Same problem all over. Um, they give me my principal. I deposit $300. My rate is 0 0.07. And my time is 20. There we go. And A. Now, first thing you want to do is type 0 0.07 uh, times 20 into your calculator and get out 1.4. So now this entire exponent here became 1.4. And now with your calculator, simply type in 300, then your E button, and then uh, 1.4 and then close the parentheses, then hit enter, and you will get $1,216.56. All right, $1,216.56, and that's how you do that, okay, guys? I knew to use this formula here because it said compounded continuously. All right, 77, you, have a, you deposit $500 in an account that pays 600% interest. Compound it continuously. How long before your balance doubles? Okay, no problem. It's compounding continuously, right? So here's my formula. Now let's substitute in the numbers that we know. I'm starting off with 500, correct? Sure I am. I know my rate. My rate is 6%. However, I don't know T. In fact, it says how long for your balance to double. So I don't know what T is. I do know what A is, believe it or not, though. Remember, I want my balance to double. So if I start off with a 500 here, I'm going to put a 1,000 over here. It doubled. There you go. Now, <coughs> if we're going to divide, if we're going to solve this um, equation for T, we must realize right away that, uh, that I have an exponential equation. Do I not? Sure, I do, guys. Look at my T. It's in the exponent. How do you solve exponential equations? Step one, you locate the base and the unknown, and you isolate them. So we got to get rid of the 500. Divide both sides by 500, and you're left with 2 equals e to the 0.06. The next thing you try to do is write both sides with the same base. That's not going to happen. So now we take the logarithm of both sides. Now, my base is e for my unknown, so I'm going to put an e here and an e here. I bring down the entire left side. I bring down the entire right side. And now we simplify. Logarithm base e of 2 is simply natural logarithm of 2. When these two numbers match here, everything's gone except the exponent. Well, that's pretty simple. Now let's divide both sides by 0.06. So I have the natural logarithm of 2 divided by 0.06 equals t. There it is. So with my calculator, I'm going to type in natural logarithm of 2, enter, divided by 0.06, enter, and I will get 11.55. So about 11 and a half years, 11.5 years. Okay. Now I'm really not interested a lot in the other questions. I mean, I'll answer it for you. Would a larger deposit double in a shorter amount of time? Well, let's see what it, let's say I made my deposit $2,000. So if this is $2,000, what would go over here then? I want my $2,000 to double. So if I put $2,000 in, what do, what do I want to get out over here? $4,000. Guys, the first thing you're going to do is divide both sides by $2,000, right? And you'll still get a 2 here. It doesn't matter. You'll still get a 2. Just like when I add 1000 here and 500 over here, I divided by 500 and I got a 2 right here. So no. It does not help you. Your money will not double quicker if you put more money in. It takes the exact same amount of time, okay? Because you'll still get a two here. I don't care if you put in a million dollars. Then over here for it to double, you would have two million dollars. Divide both sides by a million, you'll still get two. It does not matter. All right, number 78. You deposit 2,500. In an account that pays 7.5 annual interest, compounded quarterly, not continuously. How long will it take for your balance to become 3,000? All right, well, here we go. First of all, I know I'm done with compounded quarterly, 
So my um, form is going to be A equals P parentheses 1 plus R over N and T. Now let's fill in what we know. We know my principal is 2,500. That's what I'm starting off with. And we know we want to end with 3,000. My rate is 0.075. And it's compounded quarterly, correct? So if it's compounded quarterly, that means in one year I'll have four compoundings. And that's what N stands for. The number of times interest is found or the number of compoundings in one year, which is four. So up here my N is four. And my T is what I'm looking for. How long will it take? That's what I'm looking for is T. Okay, guys, before we panic, I notice I have an exponential equation. Now, I know I've taught you in the past the first thing you want to do is isolate the base and the exponent, and that's fine. But wouldn't it be nice to just quickly simplify this parenthesis, just make it easier? Sure, it would be. So with my calculator, I'm going to type in 1 plus 0.075 divided by 4, and I'm going to get this number right here. I'm going to get rid of this. And in place of that big bulky number, I'll get this. 1.01875. There we go. Now, I have an exponential equation. Here's my base. Here's my unknown. I've got to isolate it, so get rid of this number here. We'll divide both sides by 2,500. So 3,000 divided by 2,500 is 1.2. 1.2 equals this right here. All right, equals that right there. Now, I would like to write both sides with the same base. Obviously, that's not going to happen. So I'm going to take the logarithm of both sides. That's going to be a little weird, but it's okay. What is your unknown? What's the base of your unknown? This huge thing. That's the base of my unknown. So, just like I've taught you to do, this will be your base then of your logarithm. So it's going to go right there. That's your base. Kind of weird, huh? And this will be your base right there. And now, Bring down, um, do you see why this is your base, students? Whatever the base of your unknown is becomes your base of your logarithm. Now, bring down this whole side here. Bring down this whole side over here. And let's get to work. Here we go. First of all, look at this, guys. Now watch carefully, please.
dollars because that ratio is smaller it'll take less time to get the five hundred dollars so yes it would be faster some of you see that some of you don't that's okay that's not really a deal breaker to me i'm just simply the main thing i want you to know is how to solve the problem okay all right moving on <coughs>
minus a negative 11.17 and probably a lot of you caught that already uh, 9.99 um, plus 11.17 will give you a positive 1.18 and that will give you the correct answer all right so let's go over it again your case canceled whenever you're dividing like bases you write the base once up top there's nothing left in the bottom, so there's a 1 in the bottom. And you subtract the exponents. All right, so here we go. We're going to get this right here, 3.26, 3.26. And that is the correct answer. So that is the ratio of the chemical reactions of the bat, uh, of the rates of the batter placed in a 200 degree Celsius oven compared to a 150 degree Celsius oven. Okay, all right, moving on to number 81. Now, on this problem here, I think we're going to need um, a model. Did I not get that model in here? Okay, no problem. On page 80, on number 81 here, they give you a model um, above number 81. Here it is. pH equals logarithm base 10 of I over H. I hope you guys, you're probably getting really frustrated and you're probably um, thinking these are tough, but guys, if you just, all that we're doing is just substituting numbers in for variables and then simplifying. That's all that we're doing, guys, really. Same thing here. If you'll read the directions, it says this model here um, gives you um, the pH of a certain fruit. It says in the directions the pH is the S acidity or alkalinity. Okay, so this is your acidity right here, your pH, and I. This is a one, not an I, and my vision's going bad. So one over H. You'll see that in the directions, and H is um the concentration of hydrogen ions. Okay, so you can tell me the concentration of hydrogen ions, and I will tell you the acidity level of the fruit, or you can tell me the acidity level of the fruit, and I will tell you the concentration of the hydrogen ions. Okay, no, I don't know what all that stuff means. I'm not a scientist, but I know that any of us can make a substitution and simplify. It's not that hard. So, what is the concentration of hydrogen ions? So, we're looking for H. All right, in apples. Okay, what is the pH for apples? 3.1, so my pH is 3.1, so I'll put a 3.1 here. And there we go, guys. We're, we can solve that so quickly. We don't need this anymore. We can solve this so quickly, guys. It's a logarithmic equation. We have one logarithm over here. It's all by itself. It's isolated. So let's write this problem exponentially. We have one logarithm. Let's write it exponentially. Bring your 10 over. 10 to the 3.1 power equals 1 over H. Now, I don't like this H being here as a denominator. I'm going to multiply both sides by H. When I multiply this side by H, I get 10 to the 3.1 power times H. When I, divide, when I multiply this side by H, I get a 1. Now, why did I multiply both sides by H? For an obvious reason. I did not want this H in the denominator. I don't want that down there. That's a mess. That's a pain. So multiply this side by H. Multiply this side by H. Over here, these will cancel, leaving you with 1. And here we have 10.31 times H. Now, these two are multiplying. If I want to get H by itself, then I've got to divide both sides by 10 to the 3.1 power. So over here they cancel, and there's my answer right there. H equals 1 over 10 to the 3.1 power. All right. Now with your calculator students, you can type in your 1 up top. So hit 1, then hit divide it by because the fraction. Then put a parenthesis and put 10 arrow. 3.1 and close your parentheses and hit enter and you should get something like this on your screen 7.943282347 e to the negative 4 that means scientific notation times 10 to the negative 4 power okay and guess what I'll accept that answer I have no problem with that answer whatsoever it's the exact same thing as this answer here 
know that. Well, guys, you should know how to take scientific notation and write it in regular notation. You take the decimal. It's a negative 4. So you do not move it to the right. You move it to the left. Negative, negative 4 places. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So we have to fill in three zeros. And we get 0 .00079. 079. Same thing, or you can leave your answer in scientific notation. I have no problem with that. So we simply made a substitution and solved the problem. Not too difficult. Okay, 49. If the value of a new car that you bought in 91 decreases by 14%, what will the car be worth in 1995? Now, guys, I've taught you this. You're welcome to take 19,000 times 0.14, okay? And if you do that, you're going to get... Step. 
gaps over here. So basically, do you see what I'm doing? I'm taking 30,000 and every year I'm multiplying it by 1.15. Next year, 1.15. Next year, 1.15. Next year, 1.15. Over and over and over for every year that the business exists. So my model's going to look like this. 30,000 times 1.15 to the what power? I don't know, so I'll put an X there. And of course, all of that equals my Y. So now that I've done that, this is pretty simple, guys. My business started in 1980. What was the revenue in 1990? That's 10 years later. So right here where the X is, put a 10. So with your calculator, type in 30,000. Then parentheses, then 1.15, then close your parentheses, arrow, and then 10. All right. So let me type that in and see what I get here. We're going to get it's worth 121000 $121,367. Okay. Now, what about 1992? That's just 12 years after 1980. So instead of a 10-year, we're going to put a 12. So instead of a 10-year, we'll put a 12. All right. So let's see what we get. We're going to get $160,508. So in 1990, the company was worth this much. One hundred twenty-one thousand three hundred sixty-seven dollars, and in nineteen ninety-two, it's worth one hundred and sixty thousand uh, five hundred and eight dollars. So all that we're doing basically is writing an exponential model and then um, solving the problem. Okay, here we go. Number six. Now here, guys, what they want us to do is to use this information and to solve this logarithm. Now on your test, I'm not gonna let you use a calculator on these, so don't use a calculator. We're gonna have to solve this the long way. That's gonna be difficult to do, but look at the directions. If you look at the directions, they tell you the logarithm of three, and they tell you the logarithm of 12. Let me say that again. They tell you the logarithm of three and the logarithm of 12. So because in my directions, I have information about a three and a 12, I wanna rewrite my argument so that I have a three and a 12 here. That's not too difficult to do. One fourth is the same thing as three twelfths. Come on guys, think about it. If I reduce three twelfths, I get one fourth, okay? Now why would I do that? Well watch and you're gonna see, I wanna work a three into the argument and I wanna work a 12 into the argument, and I did. Now watch what you do next, expand. In your argument here, we have division. I'm dividing two things, a three into 12. So I'm gonna write two logarithms. I don't have to put the 10 because it's understood to be 10. So my top of my fraction goes here. The bottom of my fraction goes here. And because my argument was dividing, I put a minus sign. And now guys, I'm done, look. This says logarithm of three. What is the logarithm of three? Point four seven seven minus what's the logarithm of twelve? It's right here. Logarithm of twelve equals one point oh seven nine. So now subtract those two numbers and you'll get the answer. Negative point six oh two. Pretty cool actually. Back it up and watch again if you need to, okay? But what we did, we realized the only information I had was of logarithm three and logarithm twelve. So I rewrote my one fourth so that I had threes and twelves in there and then broke it down, expanded it, and then got my answer. Let's try this one. Okay, the logarithm of 36. Now somehow I've got to get a three and a 12 worked in there. Well guys, you should think of that right away. Three and 12, I mean look, three times 12. So instead of putting 36, I'm gonna put three times 12. Why would I do that? Because now I have threes and twelves in my argument, which is what I wanted. Now I can take this logarithm, base 10, of course. I can take this logarithm and split it up or expand it into two logarithms. I have an argument that's multiplying, <clears throat> it's multiplying two things, so I'm gonna write two logarithms. With my first logarithm, I'll put a three. With my second logarithm, I'll put a 12. Now because they were multiplying, I'll put a plus sign here. And here we go. Logarithm of three is 0.477 plus logarithm of 12 is 1.079. Add those two numbers together and you will get the correct answer of 
some good problems that are kind of making you think a little bit and using your logarithmic properties. All right, number uh, 30, numbers 39 through, um, and I'm not sure what page that is. Let me check real quick. Okay, so this, we're on page 46, okay, page 40, that can't be right, page 46. Um, sorry guys, I'm not sure where I got 46 from, but that's rather humorous. Page 416, page 416. So we're on page 416, the directions say to solve these logarithmic equations, all right? So please listen carefully. I have a logarithm on one side and a logarithm on the other side. Now we've done, we've solved log, logarithmic equations where we have just one logarithm in the equation, but now we have more than one. Well, whenever this happens, you want to get one logarithm on one side and one logarithm on the other. So, see these two logarithms? Don't they both have a base of four? Sure they do. Don't they both? There's no number to the left of this. There's no number to the left here. So I'm going to condense these two logarithms down to one logarithm like this. Logarithm base 4. Now, what are the two logarithms doing? They're subtracting, right? So that means this 2 goes up top. Division. This x goes in the bottom. Now, now that I've done this, I am allowed to, I, I've got, okay, listen, <clears throat> I have this side down to one logarithm, I have this side down to one logarithm, there's nothing to the left here, nothing to the left here, so I cross my logarithms off, they're identical, cross them off, and you have 2 over x equals 2 over 3. Well guys, obviously x has to be a 3, doesn't it? 2 over 3 equals 2 over 3, this has to be a 3. So x equals 3. Now don't forget, on logarithmic equations, you must always check your answers. So we go to where the x is and we put a 3. Does that give me a positive argument? Yes, a positive 3. So we're good. Number 41. All right, same thing, guys. Listen, we have one logarithm over here, but we have two over here. So I want to condense these down so we have one logarithm. Logarithm base 4 of 5 equals, now, take your two logarithms, and they both have the same base, do they not? There's nothing to the left, nothing to the left, so we're totally good. Let's go ahead and condense. So I have logarithm base 4. Now the two logarithms are subtracting. So since they're subtracting, I take my, um, first number here, 10, and put it over my second argument here, which is x. And look, guys, I'm good. I have a log base 4, log base 4. Cross them off. And you're left with 5 equals 10 over x. Now, guys, you should know what to do. Think about it. I don't want an x in a denominator, do I? Of course not. So multiply this side by x. But if you multiply one side by x, multiply the other side by x, okay? So, 10 over x times x, these cancel, leaving you with 10. 5 times x is 5x. Do you see what I did? I did not want this x in the denominator, so I multiplied both sides by x, okay? And now look what you have. 5x equals 10. Divide both sides by 5, and x equals 2. And there's your answer. Now, don't forget to check your answer. Put a 2 in for x right here. And is your argument positive? Yes, it is. Okay, moving on to the next problem. Okay, now this is pretty nice here. We have one logarithm on each side. So based on what I've just taught you to do, where you cross the logarithms off, you're probably ready to go like this, but you can't because there's a number or a letter to the left here. So you must first move this up to here. Got it? Now you're ready to cross off your logarithms, and you have 8 equals 2 to the x. Now this is not easy. This is an exponential equation. That's not easy. So how do we solve that? Well, we try to write both sides with the same base. Well, 8 is the same thing as 2 to the third power, is it not? Equals 2 to the x. So now I've 
written both sides with the same base. So now obviously 2 to the 3rd power equals 2 to the 3rd power. This x has to be a 3. So my answer is 3. Now my original problem was a logarithmic problem. So I've got to check my answer. If I put a 3 here, that's no problem at all. That's not going to change anything. My arguments are still positive. So I'm good. You never want a negative argument. Okay, guys. All right, moving on. This problem, and then this one, and I believe we're done. All right. Okay, once again, we have a logarithm on both sides. So you're like, oh, good. Let's cross them off. Not yet. You've got a one-half here. You've got to move that one-half as an exponent. All right. And now we can actually do something else. To make it a little easier, 4 to the 1 half power means the square root of 4, which is just 2. All right. Do you see what I did there? I picked up the 1 half and I put it right here. I did that. So I have nothing to the left here and nothing to the left here. And now I can just cross my logarithms off. Log base 2, log base 2, and I'm left with x equals 2. And that is your answer, x equals 2. Put 2 right here for x. And your argument is still positive. You have a positive 2 here, so your argument's positive. Your argument's positive. You're totally good. Okay, guys. All right. One more problem. Now look at this compared to the others. The other ones I had, two I had logarithms on both sides. Logarithms on both sides, the equal sign. Logarithms on both sides, the equal sign. Logarithms on both sides, the equal sign. But number 46, I only have one logarithm on one side. So do you remember what to do? You isolate the logarithm and then write it exponentially. So here's my log, here's my argument. I must get rid of this. So I'm gonna divide both sides by 6.5. So 20 divided by 6.5 is a pretty big fraction. So let's just keep it a pretty big decimal. Let's keep it a fraction. So divide both sides by 6.5. Over here, these cancel, the 6.5s cancel, you're left with logarithm base 5 of 3x equals 20 divided by 6.5. Type that in your calculator and hit math, enter, enter, and you'll get out 40 over 13. Now, if you want to put a decimal, it's going to be 3.076923077. I would at least round it to four decimal places. So you have a lot of numbers to work with, okay? That's up to you. I'm going to leave it a fraction. Now, is the logarithm isolated? Of course it is. So now we're going to write it exponentially. So 3x equals 5 to the 4013th power. Okay? And now to simply solve for x, we divide both sides by 3, right? So x equals 5 to the 4013th power all over 3. So with a calculator, you would type 5 and then arrow like this, 5, arrow, and then parentheses, 40 divided by 13, and then close your parentheses, hit enter, and then divide it by 3, enter, and you'll get the answer, 47.1580329647. 47.158, now it is a logarithmic equation, so you must check your answer. If you put this in for an argument right here, 3 times 47, that still gives you a positive number, doesn't it? 3 times 47. Sure it does. So your argument's still positive. So it checks. So that is your answer. Guys, I really sincerely hope that